Let's say we're asked to find the domain of this function, 3x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 6. We start by recognizing that this is a rational function, and rational functions cannot have zeros in the denominator. Division by zero is illegal. Easiest way to figure out what would make the denominator zero is to set the denominator equal to zero and see what values pop out. Hopefully you remember from a past discussion, we can use the AC method to factor this quadratic equation. The factors would be x plus 3 times x minus 2. Because the product is equal to 0, I can invoke the zero product property and say that either x plus 3 must equal 0 or x minus 2 must equal 0. Solving x plus 3 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 3. Solving x, e x minus 2 equals 0 gives us x equals 2. Now what that means is, if x is either equal to negative 3 or positive 2, the denominator of the original function 3x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 6 will be 0. So these two values must be excluded from the domain. We have to remove them. In order to see how that works, it's best to visualize it on a graph first before we write down the domain. So here I've written the function in its factored form, 3x minus 1 over x plus 3 times x minus 2. We know that negative 3 and positive 2 are excluded. So on my number line, I plotted the two numbers, negative 3 and 2, and above each of them, or both of them, I've put an open circle to in indicate exclusion. Now we pick a number to the left of negative 3, say negative 4. Now what we're looking for is we want to make sure that the denominator is not 0 for any numbers to the left of negative 3. So if I plug negative 4 into my denominator, x plus 3 times x minus 2, I get negative 4 plus 3, which is not 0. I don't quite care what it is, I just want to make sure that it's not 0. If we plug negative 4 into x minus 2, we get the same thing, something that's not 0. So at no point of time am I dividing by 0 if I pick a number to the left of negative 3. So that entire region goes into my domain, negative infinity to negative 3. Remember, we're always reading intervals from left to right. Now we pick a number between negative 3 and 2, let's say 0. Well, 0 plus 3 is a positive number. 0 minus 2 is a negative number. The product of a positive and a negative number will always be negative, but never zero. That's the case we have to avoid. So all the numbers between negative 3 and 2 actually are in the domain as well. And then lastly, we pick a number to the right of 2, say 3. 3 plus 3 is definitely not 0. 3 minus 2 is 1, not 0 either. So that means all the numbers to the right of 2 can be plugged into this function as well, and they'll give us an appropriate y value. So the domain from start to finish, we look at the number line from left to right as we read it. So we start at the leftmost endpoint, which is negative infinity, and our first break or first trouble happens at negative 3. So we, our intervals are negative infinity to negative 3, but we exclude negative 3 and we show this by using parentheses, union negative 3 to 2. In this interval, all the numbers between these two numbers satisfy our condition that we should be able to plug the numbers into the function, and we should get y values back, except for the endpoints. So that's why we exclude the endpoints by indicating them with parentheses. And then lastly, by the same argument, we go from 2 to infinity, 2 is excluded because we cannot plug 2 into this function. And that's it.